I'm Annalyn van Wauwe, clarinetist and teacher, and this is the WOW warm-up. Enjoy! I like to compare playing the clarinet to the shape of a pyramid. The concept is actually very simple. In order to reach a higher instrumental and artistic level, we are supposed to broaden our foundation. And this foundation consists of two elements, our basics and our body. And developing these clarinet basics on a daily basis and being more aware and in control of our body is the actual key to improvement. The first exercise I would like to share with you is called the climber. So I would like you to have a comfortable seat on the floor, bend your knees, parallel your feet and grab your knees with both hands. Now, imagine being a mountaineer and while inhaling, you're sliding down a mountain. And while exhaling, you're trying to pull yourself back up with an imaginary rope. Inhale down. The slower you go, the better. It's very effective. And out you climb back up. In. Now start to become aware of the active abdominal and core muscles while you're coming back up and while you're exhaling. Inhale. Exhale. This connection should always be present while you're playing the clarinet. The second exercise I would like to demonstrate is called the base. You will need a yoga block and a therapy ball. You can also use a tennis ball instead. So put the yoga block on the floor and the therapy ball right next to it. Step with your left foot on top of the yoga block, feel your body weight and now start to massage your right foot with the therapy ball. Ground your feet and use gravity to actually go really deep inside the muscles of the foot. You could actually also integrate this exercise while you're warming up or while you're practicing. Now, step off the block, parallel your feet, bend your knees and close your eyes. Start to compare both feet with one another. You might probably start to feel a difference. Your right foot will feel more grounded and, and heavier. Now remember this feeling and change sides. Step onto the block with your right foot and massage the left foot. Your feet will feel grounded after this exercise and you will now be able to use this foundation to play the clarinet. Feeling connected to your feet will help you to use your legs actively and to move your upper body freely and without any tension. The third exercise I would like to explain to you is an exercise to actually improve your posture. It's called the ski jumper. So imagine being a ski jumper. Parallel your feet or your skis. And now bend your knees as if you would actually like to jump. 
your lower back will have a slight curve and your hips will automatically lean forward. And from now on, I would like you to feel your body weight in the front of your feet. So it should feel as if you're actually leaning forward, right? Your legs will be very strong in this position. Now, loosen your arms, bend your elbows, and make your elbows almost touch your upper ribs. This very curved position will allow you to stay connected to your feet at all times. It will ease tensions in your lower back. It will make space for air to be inhaled. It will avoid tension in your arms because you're keeping your elbows close to your body and gravity will actually take down the clarinet and not your arms any longer. And this posture will constantly remind you of your core and air support while you're playing the clarinet. The last exercise I would like to demonstrate is called the peak. And the aim of this exercise is to consciously feel your breath flowing in and out of your body. I would like you to integrate a different technique while you're breathing in and out. Try to really fill your lungs with air, but while doing so, I would like you to contract the muscles of your throat. When you do this, the breath will start to become audible. So you breathe in through the nose. Whenever you add this resistance inside your throat, you will be able to actually inhale and exhale much longer. And this is what it's all about. I would like you to become aware of the breath inside the body. So. Stand in your ski jumper position, feet parallel, knees bent, and have your arms loose next to your body. Inhale. Reach in the direction of the peak of your mountain. Exhale. Slide down again. Inhale. Exhale. Make sure to move very slowly. Now start to become aware of your rib cage expanding when you inhale. Even your lower back that will be filled with air. Inhale. And while you're exhaling, I would like you to think back about the active core muscles and the very active abdominal muscles. Inhale. Expand and exhale. Support the air. And last but not least, start to be aware of the emptiness and the actual space that you're creating whenever you have been exhaling for a long time. And right before inhaling, there will be a very big capacity and volume ready for your next inhalation. A good daily warm-up needs simple exercises. 
And the aim of this exercise is to actually establish the support. You will need a metronome. And while playing, you will try to have an ongoing air support. And this air support will connect the notes to each other. You will need a very broad way of tonguing. It should be effortless. I will integrate parts where I will play flatter to, and this resistance inside the throat will actually increase the air support. And I will also integrate singing while playing, and the singing and the use of the voice will open up the throat and make you sound better and more free. And now we're going to go chromatically downwards until a C. The next exercise is all about resonance. I would like you to play with a warm and juicy sound with a very tight legato. In order to achieve a tight legato, you should focus on the air in between two notes. Try to stretch the notes, soften the fingers. I will use again flatterzung in certain passages and this will increase your air support. And in other passages, I will integrate the voice. I will sing and play at the same time. This will open your throat and you will become a beautiful resonant sound. Now we're going to play the exercise just a half step lower. High time to establish a good tonguing. This exercise will demand a constant air support and I would like you to connect the notes using an effortless way of, of tonguing. Try to go away from the reed with the tongue. Maybe you could imagine a stone bouncing on the surface of the water. So, we will need a metronome to do this exercise 
and I have as well integrated parts where I will be singing and playing at the same time to open up the throat and enlarge the sound. This time we're going to go upwards, chromatically. Many clarinet players have a tendency to decrease the air support right before tonguing. And this exercise will train how to do the opposite of this tendency. In this exercise, I will integrate so-called air accents. These are sforzati and they're entirely produced by the diaphragm and the abdominal and core muscles. By doing these kind of very loud accents without the tongue, your body will actually remember to increase the air right before tonguing or at least stay neutral right before doing so. You'll need a metronome, tempo 80, and we will go chromatically upwards from a G until the C. You will see that by doing this exercise, your tonguing will actually become effortless and almost floating. The next exercise focuses on the throat sounds. These are the nodes in your left hand. And these nodes often have a tendency to sound a little bit weak, sometimes even dirty. So I've integrated as well the voice in this exercise. This will open up your throat and open up the sound. Let's have a closer look into legato, everybody's favorite. Many clarinetists have a tendency to actually decrease the air support in between two notes. But in order to have a very tight and stretched legato, you should actually do the opposite. You should try to add air. So in this exercise, I'm actually going to integrate sforzati air accents. These are accents entirely produced by the diaphragm and the abdominal and core muscles. The most important thing in this exercise is that the air takes the lead. The air will move and your fingers, fingers will move later. You'll need a metronome, tempo 40. So it's all about playing very slowly. I will integrate as well flatter zu to increase the air support. And I will integrate the voice in order to open the throat.
Time for some Brahms. In order to improve a legato between an interval, between two notes, you should try to aim to trampoline the bottom note. And by trampolining a note, I mean that you should increase the air support on that specific note, let's say by 20 or 30 percent. And I also would like you to approach the top note from the back. So avoid approaching top notes in a too direct way. Let's talk about sound. I'm convinced that in order to have a good sound in all registers, you should work on the top register as much as you can. In this exercise, we're going to focus again on legato, so the air between the notes, and sticky, delayed fingers. I'm integrating sforzati air accents entirely produced by the diaphragm and abdominal and core muscles in order to increase the air support in between two notes. And this will actually make your body remember afterwards, when you don't play these accents any longer, that you have to increase the air support or at least keep it stable in order to play a beautiful legato. Now, in order to sound really full and warm and juicy in this top register, you will need to start to vocalize. So use the space inside your mouth, make it spacious so that the notes, the top register notes will actually sound beautiful and round. An important thing you can do to improve the sound of your top register notes is to focus on vocalizing. Start to use the space inside your mouth as much as you can. Make it spacious so that the top register notes sound full and warm and round. Another thing you could think about is to choose clever fingerings for the top register notes. In my opinion, fingerings that contain just a few fingers will sound better because they have less resistance in the clarinet. When you only put a couple of fingers, the air will easily flow out of the instrument. So the next exercise is designed in order to, yeah, reach the sky. So it will go higher and higher and higher and higher. Let's practice articulation. It's actually a very simple thing to do, but we kind of need to push ourselves to do it every single day. This exercise demands an active, ongoing support. Also between the notes, during the rests. And I would like you to anticipate the attack of each note and also its intonation. Loud notes have a tendency to sound flat and soft notes have a tendency to, to sound sharp. You will need a metronome, tempo 80.
you can now chromatically move upwards. Let's do the opposite. Move chromatically upwards until a G. Let's have a closer look into intonation. It's important to know the tendencies of your own clarinet. Some notes might have a tendency to be a little sharp and others to be flat. You should always anticipate the intonation and the pitch of the next note. Imagine internally how the next note is actually supposed to sound before you even play it. This exercise will help you to create a map of your instrument and of your internal intonation. The first part of the exercise is supposed to be done with a tuner and the second part is supposed to be done without a tuner. And now you can move chromatically upwards up to the sky. The next step would be to start to variate the dynamics. My name is Annelien van Wauwen. I really hope you enjoyed my wow warm-up. And I promise you, if you practice this warm-up every single day, you'll be very fit on the clarinet and ready to play all the concerts ahead.